the overall focus of our work is to uh, develop neuroscience and rehabilitation engineering based interventions that could restore functions such as walking to people with neural injury or disease. We also um, uh, try to develop interventions that would prevent or alleviate some of the side effects associated with these uh, ailments. We've got a lot of exciting projects that are ongoing in the lab, run by really an excellent group of students. What I've chosen to focus on today is not the project that Sam described, but more some work that we've been doing over the last five years that have, uh, has focused on preventing a highly prevalent side effect associated with immobility and the loss of sensation. And that is the prevention of pressure ulcers, or what's commonly known as bed sores. Now, many of you may have family members or know people in your community who are confined to a bed or a wheelchair because of injury or disease. All of those people are at risk of developing a pressure ulcer. In fact, up to 40% of patients in acute care develop pressure ulcers. And in long-term care facilities, at any one time, 50% of the residents are at risk of developing a pressure ulcer. And what's really frustrating about pressure ulcers is that they develop very quickly, and then they take months of treatment to heal. But one thing to keep in mind about how quickly pressure ulcers develop and, uh, and how easily Superman died of complications related to a pressure ulcer, even with all the care that he had. So, in terms of estimating the costs for treating pressure ulcers, they're actually quite staggering. And in Canada, Dr. Martin Ferguson Powell and his uh, colleagues just recently estimated the cost to be about $3.5 billion. I mean, that's ridiculous. In Alberta alone, that translates to $475 million every year for treating pressure ulcers. So, what we thought we would do is try to tackle this issue but we needed to get a better understanding of what pressure ulcers are. We found out that pressure ulcers can develop in one of two ways. They can either develop at the surface of the skin and, there will, and work their way inwards, or they can develop at deep bone muscle interfaces and work their way outwards. And these inside-out pressure ulcers are extremely dangerous. And that's because currently there are no clinically viable techniques to detect these deep ulcers early on in their development stages which means that by the time we see any signs at the level of the skin, it's much too late. Again, that's why a few years ago, we decided to focus some of our attention on coming up with a method that would prophylactically prevent the formation of pressure ulcers, and particularly those ulcers of deep uh, origin. And in addressing this issue, we asked the question, why do able-bodied people not develop pressure ulcers? Why can you sit here for several hours at a conference or sit in, in front of your computers for several hours, but not develop a pressure ulcer at the end of the day? And the reason for that is because able-bodied people fidget all the time. We are constantly moving. In fact, we subconsciously adjust our posture every six to nine minutes. So that's what we developed. We came up with a technique that we called at the time intermittent electrical stimulation that would mimic that subconscious shifting in posture that able-bodied uh, do. And really, the, the central idea was to use electrical stimulation as a method to cause muscles to contract periodically. And these are the muscles that would be compressed, such as the muscles that we sit on, the gluteus maximus muscles, and do that periodically and in every few minutes so that we can shift the posture of the individual. We investigated the effectiveness of this approach in animals, and we also studied the mechanisms of, uh, of action of this approach in human volunteers. And the results to date have been very, very promising. We actually found out that intermittent electrical stimulation is very effective in preventing the formation of those deep pressure ulcers. And quite surprisingly, it was actually more effective than current interventions, as an um, example are the um, uh, uh, interventions that are prescribed to people who use wheelchairs. So this was uh, quite exciting and told us that we potentially have something great to work on. This work has now become one of the main projects that is undertaken by our Alberta Heritage Interdisciplinary Team in, in Smart Neural Prosthesis. And the team is now working hard on developing um, underwear-like garments, which we affectionately call smarty pants, that would deliver this intermittent electrical stimulation approach 
to people who are at risk of developing pressure ulcers. And we currently have uh, four clinical partners across, uh, or clinical centers that we work with across uh, Alberta, and, in and, and we're working with them to develop various prototypes of smarty pants. And in fact, uh, as we speak, some of these prototypes are being rolled out at two of these uh, centers. Our immediate goal is to develop, with the assistance of the clinical centers, a clinically deployable, user-friendly, easy-to-use, patient-safe smarty pants system. And our hope is that smarty pants in the relatively near future could prove to be efficacious in prophylactically preventing the development of these pressure ulcers in the patient population. And if successful, we think that we could uh, contribute to substantially reducing the health care costs associated with treating pressure ulcers. But we also hope that we can improve the quality of life of people who have to live with reduced mobility and sensation. For those of you who are interested in smarty pants, I have an early version of one of the prototypes that I'm happy to share with you uh, later today. Thank you.